Well, Jack, uh, how are you, man? How, how's things going? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, just uh, just literally on the way back, just collected my car and then uh, off back to Liverpool. Oh, okay, yeah. right on. Uh, so you're actually you're not you're not from Liverpool, are you? Like, w- what are you doing in Liverpool? Yeah, so I train in Liverpool. My uh, my new base is in Liverpool. I train out of Four Corners, and uh, that's the gym I'll be representing from now on. So, oh nice. Yeah, so we live. I live in the dorms there. <laughs> Oh, right on. Uh, what, what what's with the what's with the change of gyms? What what made you decide to do that? Uh, just literally, like uh, I wasn't really sure what was going on exactly in the old gym um, once COVID came along, uh, and then also I started like traveling around and doing my own thing. So yeah, just just kind of like uh, fell on my lap a little bit. Um, I heard real good things about John. Uh, so I went down there and had a little trial, and then the next thing you know, I'm I'm representing the gym. So, okay, right on, man. And uh, so, from what I hear, uh, I don't know if it's like just a bunch of news bullshit over Facebook, but <laughs> I heard that Boris Johnson, like, apparently he made it. So there's another lockdown in in Britain or like in the UK. Is that is that like affirmative or what? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. There's a lockdown currently, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, It's making things difficult, but uh, like I say, where I'm based, like where I'm based in Liverpool, there's not Mm -hmm. a lot that can do because we are, uh, we've created our own bubble. So Mm -hmm. I live in the dorms and it's just better that way. I've never lived in a gym before until recently, but um, yeah, it suits me perfect. Well, I think that everyone's kind of in the same situation right now. Like where I'm from, I'm I'm from Ontario, like Chatham, Ontario, Canada. So like it's, we're like basically in the same boat at the moment we're uh like we're still in the lock we're in uh we were in a lockdown because of the christmas and then um after that the cases just kept skyrocketing so now we're kind of like on a curfew but it's not official it's not like an official curfew but they're basically asking people to stay home and luckily for me i'm a central worker so i i can fortunately i get to work so it's like one of those things where you're out past a certain time possible the cops might pull you over um so yeah, we're pretty much in the same boat. That's why I would ask. Um, so how are things in like in Liverpool? Is it does it affect your training at all? How does that kind of work out? Well, uh, we're lucky because uh, we we have a great set of lads that are um, in the gym, living in the gym. So we've got mm-hmm. like uh, uh, Justin uh, Burrow, we've got uh, uh, Justin Bailo, sorry, uh, Matt Casey, we've got uh, Eric De Silva, and and many others as well. So it's you know, we've got top end guys that are just living in there. So we get to train every day. It's good. It's going really well. Well, that's good, man. So like they, do they give a, they basically, do they give you exemption for training, like for athletes or how does that all work out? Well, yeah, we get, um, with us being pro athletes, we're allowed to train anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But you have actually got, as far as I'm aware, you've got to like kind of arrange your own bubble, uh, which we have done. And yeah, the police are okay with it. They came today. Um and the police were fine with it once they realized it was for pro training. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, you don't want to have to deal with that. Well, um, I was really excited to uh, interview because I do enjoy interviewing uh, fighters from uh, from uh, UK. It's, I, I love everything about Europe. I love England. I always wanted to live there as a kid. Um, yeah. So I do appreciate <laughs> I'm the you opposite. Taking... I want to live where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like uh, back and forth. I think, everyone, you know, you kind of have your preference. But I do, I do appreciate you taking your time to uh, to come on my podcast today. I, I do appreciate, it. and I like I said, I'm excited to to do this because I, I love everything about England. Yeah, man, no, I appreciate your time. It's good, you know. I enjoy and, this. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess, I, I guess I have this really weird question. So, a lot of movies kind of depict. The, it seems like they kind of embellish a little bit what you know England's all about. Is that the case, or is that do they have it pretty accurate? What do you mean, like, is it in- like? They, they seem like the, like, for example, um, a lot of times they'll take, uh, they'll make movies based off in like Mexico and it's very uh, embellished. Like they make it seem like that's how Mexico is when it's not. I mean, that's just the bad part of Mexico. Whereas you get England, they only do shots of the biggest uh, structures and they say that's what England's like when really that's just London, England. So yeah. <laughs> is it very embellished or like what's, well, to be honest with you, it's just so different everywhere around the UK. Um, mm-hmm. there, you know, there are a lot of places where if I was to go visit, I'd rather visit than, say, London, you know. And, uh, yeah, there, there are many nice places in the UK. It's, um, 
yeah, it's, there, there is some pretty places, but equally, not everything's going to be like, you know, uh, on movies, what we've got, because obviously, uh, you know, there's only so much of the country that most people in general will, like, know. Like, <laughs> sometimes when I go away, I just say I'm from London because it's easier rather than having to explain where I'm from. <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, <laughs> and just kind of moving on. So um, let's, talk, let's talk about the start of your career here. So, I mean, I know that you started your amateur in 2010, I believe, and then your pro in 2012. Um, but more importantly, I mean, what made you decide to say, yeah, I want to get punched in the face for money? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I always wanted to be a fighter from being uh, 11 year old. I, uh, well, younger. Uh, yeah. I was only training for like a year and I had my first boxing match. Mm -hmm. um, I was never really very cut out for school. Like a lot of kids, I was just high energy kid. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, teachers would be like, oh, what are you going to do? And I'd always say a professional fighter. And right. they'd always tell me to come up with a realistic option. But, you know, uh, it turns out like that has come to fruition. So maybe I said it enough, you know. <laughs> right. Right. And so was it, sorry, you said, was it like the boxing that you started off with? And then you, was that like your foundation or how, like, what, what did you kind of start off with? Well, I started off, um, I like, like all young kids, I started off, uh, I went to karate, stuff like that. And then I nice. sold it out on the bench uh, and stuff like that for messing around. But um, then, yeah, I found boxing a little bit later in life and well, not later in life, I was 11. So. Mm -hmm. yeah it just went from there I just didn't know what MMA was until I was around probably 17 uh, I started to see like BJ Penn and Tito Ortiz and all those people um yeah and then uh, the next thing you know I ended up in an MMA gym and just never looked back yeah yeah and I think like with a lot of fighters uh two points I think with a lot of fighters is that they a lot of fighters do happen to have a little bit of that foundation even before they discover the whole MMA background and a lot will either have a, a special, like they're they either trained in whatever it is, boxing or uh, jiu-jitsu, or they have that karate background. Another fighter I had, she kind of started off with like the whole karate background, which I don't hear a whole lot of. So it's kind of, it's kind of um, almost rewarding to hear that with a lot of fighters having the karate background, because for me, yeah. that's what I started off with. I had the Shotokan. And it's really nice to kind of know that someone else had that bit of that karate background. Cause that's not the first thing I would hear. It's usually boxing or, or, or jujitsu. So it's really, it's really rewarding to hear someone uh, to talk about that. Um, but like with a lot of other fighters, I mean, I think that uh, I think having those guys like BJ Penn and, and Tito Ortiz, they really kind of cemented, cemented the, uh, legacy of, of MMA, they really brought the, the sport out to people to, to join. And I think it's just growing more and more. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, uh, yeah, for me, obviously, originally the first martial art I ever uh, discovered was karate. So mm -hmm. uh, I started out in karate and then I went into boxing. And then when I actually got into MMA, it turned out that there's some real good karate guys local to me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although I wasn't in the grading system for karate, I was uh, around, uh, you know, really highly respected karate guys that used to do full contact uh, koikishin and stuff like that. So, uh, explains like uh, a little bit of my stance and stuff and yeah, and things like that. I've got quite a wide stance and I like a front kick and things like that. And, you know, some, some of my techniques and my kicking techniques quite like traditional. Mm -hmm. So what kind of what kind of karate did you train? Because it looks kind of like almost like a Kempo in a way. Yeah, well, the guys that used to train me are like from a Koikishin background. Um, okay. But I kind of never really did karate, if that makes sense. Uh, but mm -hmm. they was, you know, they would influence me with a lot of like karate style of kicking. Uh, they'd also show me like lots of like, uh, you know, other disciplines as well. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously they favored karate and I, I learned those techniques. So I kind of, kind of like hybrid, I guess, I, I guess I, I never studied a system. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it just goes to show that I think karate does work in the MMA. I mean, you got guys that, that, that were very successful. I mean, you got Lyoto, uh, I mean, currently Stephen one boy Thompson. I mean, they show that their, their, their styles, they work. Obviously they both have two different karate styles, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just goes to show that, that, that karate does work and it's, 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 I love to see it in, in, in MMA cause you don't see it often. So when you do it, it really, again, like I said, it's very rewarding to watch. No, definitely. Yeah, no, it's one of my, they're some of my favorite fighters that you named. And, 
you know, they're like guys that I'll watch and, you know, I'll try and implement some of the ways in which they move and kick and, and things like that. So, yeah, no, I, it inspires me a lot too to see karate guys. I like it. Mm-hmm. And um, so kind of moving on here. So um, watching a lot of your fights, you've had a lot of finishes. You've had, I mean, you've had submissions, you've had knockouts. So what kind of fire do you consider yourself? Are you a bit of a grab, more of a grappler base, uh, striker base? Or do you think, do you feel like you're all around? What, uh, where, where do you stand? Yeah, I feel like, um, weirdly, I've been at this a long time and I still feel like I'm actually finding my style. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely like, uh, I, I'd say I favor grappling. Um, I'm really into jiu-jitsu and I compete at a high level in jiu-jitsu as well. Like just beside my MMA, you know, I don't, I don't really even give it my 100%. I just, I'll probably train kickboxing and turn up to a big grappling event. You know, I'm one of those guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not often, you know, I'll come away with a gold medal and uh, I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I get a lot of passion out of jujitsu. So yeah, mm-hmm. I'd say a grappler for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and kind of elaborating on what you're saying, I, 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 there's a lot of people I talk to that they say like, once you do BJJ, you're almost hooked in a way. Like it, it's so addicting. Like a lot of guys, um, of course, I mean, there's nothing wrong with standing and banging, but, uh, <laughs> you know, standing and, and, and yeah. being punched in the face. But I mean, like uh, being able to go on the ground and I take that as an experience. Like once I, once I get on the ground with someone and you just start, you get a really good role going. I mean, it's, it's great. And it's addicting. Like I love, I love it. Um, yeah. It's just it's like fun. a crazy puzzle. You're forever figuring it out. Someone's always got something you ain't got, you know? Yeah. So like yeah. you're forever, you're forever just adding another piece to the puzzle. It's a, it's a real, like a real thinking man's game, I believe, uh, jiu-jitsu. You know, it hence is. why many of the best grapplers in the world are actually deemed as very geeky or, you know, the clever kids. Oh, you know? exactly. It's all it's all about the mind. Um, you know, you can have the strength, you can have the muscle, you can, but at the end of the day, that's not what the fight, I mean, that's not all what fighting's about. It, it, it might help you, but I mean, you take like a, you could take a 130 pound girl and she can, she can turn into a 165 pound girl in yeah. in a, in a split second with just learning. Like it's all about the mind. It's all how you learn to, you know, push your, you know, use your weight, use your, you use your movements. So it's, it's definitely, yeah, the mind games there is for sure. Um, now I, I looked this up. So you're obviously, you're like pretty much the sixth rank fighter in all the lightweights in UK. Um, what kind of, do you find that that kind of helps you, uh, cement yourself out there? Do you find like, you, you know, kind of like a bigger organization like UFC, Bellator, one championship, do you think that's on the horizon for you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, to be honest with you, I've been able to go to uh, a few of those places many times, but I've uh, stuck with Cage Warriors and, and my dream has always been to be in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been chasing my dream and stuff like that. And yeah, I, but I'm open to earning some money, you know, and uh, wherever the money is, is, you know, where I'll go. You know, I, I feel like now I'm just going to make my goal money, if I'm honest. I see a lot of those people in like, um, that obviously I'm ranked number six and they're a little bit above me. I believe yeah. I can hang with yeah. any of those guys. And I also believe on Cage Warriors, that standard is so high. Like mm-hmm. you can go anywhere in the world once you're competing at that top end level. And, uh, you know, and obviously I fought for the title. In my opinion, I think I won the title. You know, I, I believe yeah. I was three rounds up in that last fight. And uh, yeah, just, you know, I, I believe I'm a top, uh, top contender, you know, uh, and I'd be welcome on any show. Well, yeah. And I think like, Myself included, because I watched that fight uh, before doing this interview with you, and I think what a lot of people agree with me is that yeah, you won that fight, and uh, yeah, and it's unfortunate. I mean, that's what they say: don't leave it to the judges. But it, sometimes it really is unfair. Unfortunately, yeah, it's just unfair because obviously, you know, in reality, you're never going to finish every fight. I mean, that, no, that even no. off a guy like me, like I have a knack of finishing fights. Like I'm, I'm good at finishing fights, yeah. but you know. Sometimes you just can't, you know, just just on that day, for whatever reason, you can't, you can't, you know, hit the ball out the park kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it was frustrating. You know? <laughs> Even in the last round, I believe you won that round. Mm-hmm. But still, like, my submission attempts and my, the opportunities I created to try finish the fight, whereas he just held. Like, yeah. I, I think I was, I was real confused by that. It's like, I was thinking, do they not score submission attempts? Like, um, 
I was going for a few heel hooks. I transitioned from one side to the next. You know, like it's quite like advanced jiu-jitsu, especially when you're gassed out. I was knackered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I wish I got the fight to the floor earlier, but he grabbed the fence, which was frustrating. He did that like three times, you know. It's hard enough moving him, and then he grabs the fence as well. And yeah, it's it, uh, a little bit bitter about parts of that fight. Like I'd love to rerun it, but Cage Warriors don't want to give me it. And, you know, they want me to uh, have a fight then to get that fight back. So I don't know. Just give me Paddy Pimler or the champion. That's the only two people I'm bothered about. If not, right. like I'm happy to go elsewhere. You know? Of course, of course. And I think that's why they, they there's been a whole big dis- discussion, not just uh, in a certain league or in a certain organization, but I think overall in general and in, in the MMA world, I think that there there needs to be a bit of a change with judging. Um, you know, it's like, how can you take someone who might have watched X amount of fights, but they've never fought a real fight in their life and they make a decision? Yeah, that's that's how you win a fight if it came to a, a unanimous decision. And I think like when you get actual fighters who have done it and know what it is to win a fight, it, I think that's where the change needs to be. I think you need exactly. to have real fighters this is, judging the fight. Like, on, on what you're talking about is like, I see a photo of those judges that called my fight. <laughs> They've never yeah. had a fight in their life. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, they've never had a fight in their yeah. life. The only fight they've had is arguing over what takeaway to order with the misses. You know what I mean? On yeah. a Saturday night, like, They've never had a fight, like, I'm, I'm sure of that. And uh, one of those judges gave my opponent that first round. He didn't touch me in the first round. I controlled, I trained to keep the distance. I heard he was going to strike with me. So, uh, like, me, I just, me being me, got a new striking coach. I, I just thought, yeah, I'm going to strike with this guy then. If that's what he wants and, you know, that's what we'll do. <laughs> so, so well, looking back on it, maybe I should have, uh, look to get the uh, fight to the floor earlier because even just that little taste on the floor, like I, I feel like I was the one transitioning into the submission attempts, and I, I believe I'd have got him. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, super frustrating. But you know, like I, I'm not new to like adversity, so you know I've tasted all sides of the sports. I've had a bad decision before. I've had, uh, you know, I've had every side of the sport. Knock, I've been knocked out. I've been submitted. You know, but there's no quitting me, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm just going to keep on going until I think I'm where, you know, at like the maximum of my potential. You know, and I just don't believe I'm anywhere near there yet. So, I'm gonna, I've got a long time. I, I believe. I think, like in any fighting aspect, whether it's MMA or your own fighting, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you train in, I think you never stop growing. And and one thing I was always taught was when I got my black belt, um, I was taught like you got your black belt. That's congrats, but you are just now open to learn because you never stop learning. And that I think that's an aspect in any part of your life. Yeah, absolutely. I you know, like they say, don't they just say it's just two inches of your waistline that belt. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, the learn, the, but the learning never stops. All that, all, like when I see a black belt, for me, it just, you know, it just tells me that they're, you know, they're accomplished, but they're not, you know, they're not not learning. You know, they're not a master. You can never master jujitsu, in my opinion. I think it's just a, you know, someone's going to bring something different every time. You know, just a case of like trying to find uh, many training partners in jujitsu. They seem to cross train a lot more than MMA guys, and I believe that's why uh, they're so good. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, you can be the best at anything. You can be a dominant champion wherever you are, but eventually, either someone's going to beat you, or you're going to get you're going to face adversity, and mm. someone's going to bring something that you haven't seen. Granted, you win the fight, but I mean, I don't think anybody goes their whole. I mean, if you take a, a dominant guy like Khabib and are going to met off, I don't believe that that he. It would appear that he's dominant for what he does, but I think. Yeah one fight in my opinion and i might sound biased because charles oliveira um, i'm sorry <laughs> give him charles oliveira I, I don't see him tying that guy Ooh, up. Wow. yeah that that's a tough fight i mean i've been i, think if, I don't think he'll be able to uh i don't think he'd be able to maintain him in, in a fixed position like he does many other opponents i believe his jiu-jitsu is too uh it, it's really pure it's it's a great style of jiu-jitsu, and I believe you'll just see um, you'd see him forever like transferring into different attacks. I think he'd really keep that uh, that ground game flowing. I think Charles. Oh, I'd absolutely, 
And I think like, I remember watching him, you know, a few years ago when he was still fighting in featherweight and he was cutting a lot of that weight. And yeah, I, I think it was evident that he had great jujitsu, but I don't think the more he fought, the more he grew, the older he got, the, the better he got because he gets better in every fight. Um, and then with the stand up too, I mean, stand up just became unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and then watching him at lightweight, you just watch how he transitioned. It's like it's like he's not even thinking about it. He's just, okay, I'm not going to get you there. Well, let me get you here. And it's it's insane, like, what he did to Tony. And, and I never thought that was going to happen because um, Tony normally is uh, quite good on his back. I mean, he's got a lot of uh, – tri- he can do a lot of triangles off his back. I know that he's known for that. He does a lot of uh, omoplatas. Um you know, yeah, like he's an unorthodox to... guy and he's really like long and wiry. But like you say, mm-hmm. I just think where uh, Khabib wins a lot of fights is he can he can uh, get that fight and make it quite static to his favourite mm-hmm. positions, to his favourite sort of pin positions so that he can strike. Uh, I don't think he'll be able to stop Charles Oliveira's flow. I think uh, that's the kind of jiu-jitsu that guy brings and I think you'd see a lot of flow and a lot of transitions and I think uh, Charles Oliveira would uh, come out on top. Absolutely. And in I ground think, exchanges especially. Yeah, absolutely. And and I kind of had this conversation with my, my father last week. We talked about hockey. I mean, <laughs> totally different subject. But we talked about hockey, how you can have a very good team. But if you have a team that might not be as skilled, but because there's such a bad matchup for you, where their strength lies, where, where it fits into your weakness, that's where people have trouble. It's so different than MMA. You can have a, a dominant guy like Khabib, but you can have someone who's just such a bad matchup, someone that... Yeah, yeah, like uh, someone who's ranked number five or number six or number seven, like that guy could beat the champ, but he might not get there, you know what I mean? You you see a lot of this. Often, uh, number two in the division isn't who I want to see fight that champion. Mm -hmm. It's often number six, seven or eight, you know, like uh, the guy that just can't beat the guys to get there, but he's kryptonite for that guy. I, I see a lot of that in MMA. Yeah. And then that's the issue is like, you get a guy like Charles Oliveira, who I believe will be, could, could beat him if, if that, if they, if Dan White has him come back, uh, it's just, you look at that matchup and, and Oliveira, I don't see him having a problem with Khabib anywhere. I mean, the, the no. feet could be questionable, but um, I mean, he, he can, I think he can stand bang now. So I think it, it'd be a really tough fight for Khabib, but that kind of makes, that's what makes people, uh, legends that's what makes you great that's what drives you and pushes you and i think that's a fight that could possibly bring him back i know we talked about that um so it'll be interesting to see i'm um, just kind of moving on here though um so I- i'm sure you know uh former double double cha- uh double uh cage warrior champ mason jones uh just got recently got signed to the ufc uh, yeah he actually is fighting wednesday on uh, ufc fight island eight card um Obviously, I'm sure you know of him. Um, <laughs> if you do, yeah, yeah, no, I know, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, and, yeah. So, with a guy like him, I mean, he's he got uh, welterweight champ, I think, I think welterweight uh, strap, and then he got the lightweight strap. So, a guy yeah. like him, kind of having to be a champion in a different organization or in a respectful organization, do you find that's kind of like a stepping stone to getting into a bigger organization like UFC? Yeah, absolutely. I think Cage Warriors is a stepping stone to the UFC. Uh, obviously, I knew Mason Jones would go there as soon as he won those uh, those titles. Yeah. And uh, credit to him, you know what I mean? Like, that's no easy at all. Like, anyone that can do that, to me, is an incredible athlete and an incredible fighter. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I just wish him the best. But I also equally wish that I could have got to uh, fight him myself, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. for me, when, like, when, like, when I look back on anything, like I just always think, like, I want to sit there one day and look back on my career and go, I fought all the best guys. Do you know what I mean? That's what, that's what I want. I want to fight the best guys possible. And, you know, and that's, that is what I'm going to do in the future. Do you know what I mean? Like anyone who I think is really good, that's the guy I want to fight. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And I think like um, a guy like him, you know, it's interesting talking about Mason. I had him on the podcast, uh, geez, like three, three months ago, maybe, Uh, maybe three months ago. I, I can't remember now, but it was about three or four months ago. And he said, oh, no doubt, I'll be in the UFC. And I was like, oh, that's good. I mean, you know, you're confident. And I was like, but, I mean, things happen. You know, things might not work the way you want it to. But I was like, oh, no doubt. I think this guy could probably get in the UFC. 
but you know, things happen. Maybe it doesn't progress as fast, but I mean, literally like two or three weeks after the guy got signed, I'm like, no, no fucking way. <laughs> I'm like, no way. <laughs> this, you know, I think, you know, this is awesome. I and mean, I'm glad to hear, you know, former guests uh, get, uh, getting what they want. And yeah, and, for sure. Uh, like it was crazy. deserves to be there, you know, like yeah. anyone that can collect two belts in two weight divisions deserves to be there. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, Gat Nockham is a, is a stud, isn't he? So now I just want to see him do well in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so kind of uh, just moving through. Um, so when I was going through all your pictures, I mean, the veins are popping, the, the muscles are <laughs> popping out. I mean, what's your training schedule? I mean, you're absolutely jacked. What is it that you do to get – Are you? do you always try to maintain that frame or what? Well, is it – well, I'm – it's a bit dark in the car. It's getting dark outside now, but uh, <laughs> like I'm quite round at the minute. I walked back into the gym not so long back, and uh, they couldn't believe how round my head was. I'm getting called burger head all the time. And <laughs> but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not that lean at the minute. But I, I will be again, and uh, I'm really ramping up the training now, and you know, looking to become a better athlete as always. But uh, I train every day, twice a day, every day. Right. Yeah. So you don't have a problem maintaining your shape. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about fighters is that they think, well, what, like, uh, they look through their Instagram they're like, how are they eating all that food? Like they just, they just have like a, you know, like a a monster drink that's like 56 (laughs) grams of sugar. Like how do they do that? And it's like, people got to realize like you guys train like two or three times a day sometimes. So you have no problem like shooting that back. And it's like, okay, well now let's go, let's go grapple. And you just burned it all off in an hour. Right. So yeah. it's, uh, I think people need to keep Absolutely. that in mind. It's not, it's not. Uh... I got a burger sponsor recently, as you can tell. I'm sorry? <laughs> I got a burger sponsor, a local company, Good Burger. Nice. So uh, as you can tell, that's why I'm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Burgers are good. So well, uh, what's your sponsors? It. So what's sorry? your sponsors though? Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, what's your sponsors? Like, do you, what is that? Like free burgers for life? Or is it just the money? They help out with the training? What? Yeah, what uh, I, I guess free free burgers uh and whatnot but uh maybe it'll help out here and there as well and you know there's all different kinds of sponsorships that i get and to be honest with you i'm just really well like uh supported locally like the any local athlete in this town like people seem to get behind them which i really like and uh Mm. we're a small town but I, i believe we're really strong like that and um yeah a lot of people help me out and support me and and they don't want a great deal in return either. Like I've had, I've had to chase guys up for their logos to put on my uh, on my kit, you know, because they're helping me out so much. And they're just like, oh, I'm not bothered. I just want to see you do well. So they're like, um, you know, they're the best sponsors in the world. Those kind of people that are just just genuine. You know, they don't want to other than to see you do good. We have a lot of that in this town. Yeah. And that's, and that's, I think that's important too, especially when you get someone from your hometown sponsoring you. I mean, cause it, it's almost like you're, you're fighting for your, the, your hometown in a way. So it's nice to kind of see people genuinely help want to help you and not just say, yeah, throw it on your shorts. Will you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm always repping Grimsby. So <laughs> Grimsby and Clay Phelps, that's where I'm from. And uh, we're a small little place in England, but you know, we're, uh, we've got big heart here. So mm-hmm. we're, we're tough. <laughs> so, so do you have any like upcoming fight news? Have you been offered anything yet? Yeah, so I've been offered um, from Cage Warriors. I got I, I got an offer from Cage Warriors. Uh, they wanted me to recontract, but uh, if I'm honest, I'm just having a bit of a little bit of thinking time because I I want money. I believe I deserve to be paid. Uh, you know, and I I just don't want to put my my body through all this hard work, these hard camps, and have, have very little to show for it because. Uh, when I've been with Cage Warriors, it doesn't even cover the cost of everything that I do all the time. You know what I mean? So just weighing up my options now, you know, uh, it's not to say I wouldn't uh, go like anywhere else, you know, like um, I, I'd even be signed back to Cage Warriors if the fights were right. But right. I believe I've uh, saved saved good time there for them and uh, I, I believe I deserve a rematch. And unless it's a rematch or one of your biggest names, then I'm not interested. Of course. And you got to do what's right by you. I mean, you've had, you've had quite the experience in, in, in MMA. You've had quite the career so far. I mean, you've, you know, it's not like you have five fights and you gotta, yeah, you gotta have to take fights. You don't want to take. Yeah. You've had, you've got quite the record. So, I mean, you've been, you've been out there for, for a while. Yeah, Um, for sure. Like I see like a lot of, you know, uh, 
you know, a lot of fighters on we're, we're all in the same boat on that show. Um, mm-hmm. but it's a stepping stone to the UFC. But I've purposely took a uh, huge like you know, like uh, pay cuts in a way because I yeah. could go elsewhere and then a hell of a lot more. But I've sacrificed that for a long time, and I'm just at a weird point in my career at the minute. Actually, I just uh, I want to I want to earn some money. You know what I mean? Like I, I want this to pay. I don't want to keep taking damage for nothing. Um, mm. You know, and it's your health on the line every time. Like even in that fight, uh, my feet were absolutely smashed. You know, just just from me throwing the kicks. Like I couldn't yeah. walk for weeks. So, you know, like I, I need to uh, make sure that I'm fairly rewarded uh, or the opportunity has to be correct. And I think that's what some fans need to realize too, is like, well, it's like, well, what are they doing? Like, why, why wouldn't they take that fight? And it's like, yeah, again, people don't realize like the, you know, the risk reward factor in every fighter. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that they don't realize like, sure. Yeah. You might enjoy fighting, but you're not doing it for yeah. peanuts. You're not, you're not doing it. You're not getting, <laughs> you're not taking the injuries. You're not getting the bruises for, or, you know, less than what you think you deserve. You, you know, you got to do what's right by you. And, you know, at the end of the day, everything, everything kind of works out. I mean, there's a risk reward. Like I'm not going to go work. I'm not going to go work uh, overtime and not get paid for it. Right. It's the same thing. You're not yeah. going to go in and not, and do something that you're not really getting anything out of. Um, you know, I think you like what you do, but you still need to get paid. Right. Yeah, for so, sure. Like, and like I say, like for me, I'll always put, good opportunity before money so i'm not like a very money orientated person like money means nothing to me it, apart from freedom like if i can go on a different show and get more money that just gives me the freedom to be able to keep living in the gym so right. that's what i need to do because uh currently i'm i'm just you know doing what i can to just live in that gym you know mm-hmm. and i've got good opportunities john's really good to me um and yeah if, if it weren't for someone like john I'd be really struggling, you know. It'd be it'd be difficult to sort of like meet overheads like that and and things like that. So I've got a real good opportunity and I'm working hard, you know. what I mean to represent the gym. Of course, of course. Now, just lastly, um, I just wanted to ask you. Um, I'm asking every every person I'm having on here. Uh, so you got that 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 bit. Uh, can't talk today. Excuse <laughs> me. Uh, you have that big matchup on Saturday. I mean, you got Poirier Poirier versus McGregor too. What's uh what's your prediction for that fight? Who you think is gonna get the re- uh who you think is uh, victorious in the rematch? Well, I genuinely feel like a lot of people like to talk crap about McGregor because <laughs> of the way he is, and they always uh, count him out. Like weirdly, like people don't take his some of his achievements as serious as they should. Like no one can win two belts without being one of the best in the world. You know what I mean? Of course. It won't look, it won't Dana's matchmaking or like that. Like the guy, he beat Eddie Alvarez, he beat uh, Aldo. Like they're legit achievements against top end people. You know what I mean? When you're knocking that many people out that many times, it's not fluke. So, no, I genuinely believe, uh, I, I think Connor, I, I genuinely believe Connor can win that fight. But the interesting part to this is uh, Dustin Poirier's got a lot better. So, that's super interesting. You know, and like all you have to do is look at his uh, his latest fights at lightweight. It's uh, it, it's really interesting. But I'm going with McGregor. Yeah, it's it, and I think the same. It's the same uh, response with most people I've had. It's the Poirier factor is he's improved, but is it enough to take on? Because if you look at Poirier's fighting, a lot of his fights, his boxing is unbelievable. I mean, you mm. watch him box and he's unbelievable but the problem with it is that he takes a lot of damage when he has those fights so as much as connor i mean we know about the cardio factor but we don't like i mean i personally i mean with all the crap that's gone on i mean i think a lot of people lost respect for him but as a fighter i think i think this whole thing about him taking the time off i think personally i think it's i think it's a bit of a mind game i think he's been off working his ass off with the cardio i think he's been working his ass off with the with the wrestling that the takedown rest or wrestling uh takedown defense um with his hands his boxing i think he's this has been a whole big game and he's focused he's sharp and i think he's ready to roll and i mean i think that he's personally got the fight uh in the bag too um i think poirier maybe the first you know, the first, maybe the first round to kind of see what's going to happen. But I think 
yeah, I think Pori. It's hard to say it because I like Poirier as well, but I think yeah, I like him as well. But I, I just genuinely think he, I think McGregor will finish him. I, I really do because, uh, like you say, Dustin Poirier is really good boxing, but he does get it as well. And McGregor's super elusive, like really elusive and really precise with his shots. And when he hits you, like you stay hit. So I just think when he hits people with that left hand or you know most of his shots anyway, you know I just think he people stay hurt of him. They don't seem to, like, recover. They don't have enough time to recover off them. So, or unless you're Diaz and you've got that kind of chin, I, oh I, I can't see it going the distance. Yeah, it's – um, and I think – and people got to realize, too, is, like, I think he gave Khabib the, the hardest fight. I mean, Khabib, yeah, he took him down and he does – Even Mayweather. Yeah, people, Mayweather. Well – People talk about this. I know Mayweather, like, let him – you know, but I genuinely believe if if you could – you'd take him out earlier. I, I just, I don't agree with like, oh, you just let him burn himself out and stuff like, it's too risky. I, I think the fight game's too risky. I don't, I don't see fighters playing like that. I think if you can finish someone, you'll finish them as quick as you can. Oh, of course. You know, uh, you're not going to keep letting someone like Conor McGregor, an MMA guy, debut boxer, hit you. Like, you just, I, I can't see anyone risking that. I think he just genuinely did quite well with an unorthodox boxing style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's definitely going to be interesting yeah. for sure. Um, but uh, Jack, I, I wanted to just appreciate uh, you coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, I hope to hear good things from you in the next while. Hopefully maybe UFC on the horizon. Uh, well, I guess we'll see mate. Yeah, for sure. Thank you very much, mate. And I really appreciate your time. And, uh, yeah, sorry that I'm stuck in my car. I've been I've been chasing my car around there, uh, getting it fixed today. So, oh, <laughs> ready, worry, ready to travel. It's not <laughs> not a problem. But yeah, we're we're all good anyway, and I'll be back training, and uh, hopefully you'll see me soon. You know, I I, I want to stay active, so hopefully you'll see me fighting soon, and hopefully Absolutely. a really big name. <laughs> Absolutely, man. You take care, and you deserve nothing but the best. And uh, we'll see you soon, man. Oh, thank you, mate. Take care, pal.